Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Now those of you who were with me last night on the World of Warships EU community stream on Twitch will have heard the news that the next tech tree to be introduced into the game are the pan-European destroyers. In light of this news I thought it was entirely inappropriate that today we should be playing a non-tech tree premium US Navy Tier 7 cruiser the USS Atlanta. For some reason a lot of people have been sending me Atlanta replays lately. I don't have a problem with that, I think this ship is fantastic. Morning men, starboard 10, round the boy and back again. This is the first premium ship that I owned in the game, along with the Kitakami, which is no longer available. It was a tier 8, tier, yeah it was tier 8, uh, version of the Kuma class cruiser, which is a, yes a tier 4 cruiser, but the Kitakami had 40 torpedoes. <laughs> Um, and was probably responsible for more friendly fire kills than any other ship in the game. In fact, every other ship in the game combined. So, no Kitakami. Not anymore, unfortunately. It was removed and uh, replaced with the Atago. Although, while there is no Kitakami in the game anymore, the USS Benham is doing a remarkably good job of a Kitakami impression. With the uh, sheer number of torpedoes that it carries, combined with the ludicrously short reload, it can have 32 torpedoes in the water at the same time. Anyway, enough talk about Kitakamis and Benhams. Although, talking about friendly fire is actually kind of appropriate, considering how the real USS Atlanta met her end in 1942 during the naval battle of Guadalcanal. When during a particularly chaotic night battle, she was struck by two Japanese torpedoes, and then finished off by at least 19 18 shells fired by the USS San Francisco. As far as this battle is concerned, the matchmaking for Sinful here is far from ideal. I mean, it could be a lot worse. There's a distinct lack of destroyers for Sinful to terrorise. Only one on the enemy team. And while there is a carrier, well, it's only tier 6 and the Atlanta's AA is godlike, along with the USS Flint, it's one of only two ships in the game to get unlimited charges on the defensive fire consumable. But probably the biggest problem here for Sinful is the sheer number of enemy battleships and cruisers and the lack of destroyers on the enemy team, because with its radar and its 16 rapid-firing dual-purpose 5-inch guns, this ship is an absolute death sentence for any destroyer stupid enough to get spotted within the Atlanta's firing range. But those massed 5 inch gun batteries, which are almost certainly the Atlanta's biggest strength, are also its biggest weakness because of their destroyer gun batteries. Which means they have destroyer gun battery range, by default just a fraction over 11 kilometers. Although Sinful has obviously buffed that using the advanced firing training skill to around 13. Now that is an interesting choice of targets to go for. Now, okay, the Ranger isn't a top-tier carrier, and particularly when they're not top-tier, carriers do prefer to go for isolated targets, but there are isolated targets, and then there are isolated targets. This is an Atlanta. The only reason any of those aircraft are going to survive is because Sinful's guns couldn't actually engage them until they passed the island in front of him. And speaking of things that have passed the island in front of him, here comes the excellent British Tier 7 light cruiser, the Fiji, who would normally give an Atlanta some serious problems in a gunfight, but that Fiji appears to have forgotten two things. First, the Atlanta has torpedoes. You do not give a broadside to an Atlanta in a light cruiser at that kind of range. Sinful switched to armour piercing with his second salvo and did 20,000 damage. If the Fiji had been even slightly angled, he would have won that fight. Well, okay, he wouldn't. The torpedoes would have killed him. <laughs> but if it had been a straight gunfight, I mean, the Fiji only got to fire one salvo of armor piercing at point blank range and it shaved off a third of Sinful's health. If the Fiji had angled and Sinful didn't have torpedoes, the Fiji would have won the fight. He would have been hurt. Sinful would have still been able to do a fair old amount of damage to him with high explosive, but he wouldn't have been able to kill him. Oh look, the Ranger's back. Rocket planes this time. I guess he just didn't learn his lesson the first time. Then again, I, I do have a certain amount of sympathy for the Ranger. He isn't top tier, he is only tier 6, and there aren't a lot of other targets for him to go for. It's just a shame that the one that he is focusing on is the one ship in this battle that's going to do the most damage to his aircraft. Although the Ranger was keeping him spotted, but thanks to the cover of the island, Nobody on the enemy team was really able to take advantage of the spotting. 
and tucked in behind this island is precisely where Sinful wants to be. He took a bit of a chance earlier on, crossing a large stretch of open water in order to get here, and did get spotted, but nobody was able to shoot at him. And now that he is here, well, it's a bit like that situation in The Watchmen, where Rawsash is in prison with a whole bunch of people that he put in there in the first place. And when one of them tries to give him a damn good shanking in the chow hall, and Rawsash deals with it in his fairly typical, brutal manner, he turns around to all of the assembled inmates and says, You don't understand. I'm not stuck in here with all of you. You're all stuck in here with me. All of those enemy ships, in open water, on the far side of the island, they're all stuck here with Sinful. Because this is the good thing about the 5-inch gun batteries on the Atlanta. They have the same ballistic properties as the 5-inch guns found on American destroyers, because they are the 5-inch guns found on American destroyers. They might not have great range, even with the advanced firing training skill. And the shells are so lightweight that if you take that skill and you do get the range up to 13 kilometers, practically the only thing that you can hit at that kind of range, because the shells take so long to get there, are enemy battleships, like the USS New York over there. But the reason the shells take as long as they do to actually get to the target at long range is because of how high the shells have to be fired in order to achieve that kind of range, which means that like US Navy destroyers, the Atlanta is capable of lofting shells clean over just about any kind of obstacle. The kind of obstacles, like this island, which do provide great cover for cruisers hiding behind them, but which would block the shots fired by most cruisers that aren't the Atlanta. So the trick when you're playing the Atlanta is to identify features like this island, features that you can quite safely hide behind and yet at the same time still shoot over. Get into cover behind these islands without dying on the way, and then hope that there are enough enemy targets within around about 10 kilometers on the far side of the island that you can rain death and destruction down upon, and so make it worth your time getting here in the first place. And Sinful definitely has all of those boxes ticked. In fact, he might have too many of them. He popped his radar, that identified the Geneva. He's loaded the armor piercing. He's creeping forward so that his rear turrets can fire while at the same time reducing the number of ships that have a target solution on him. And watch how he handles this, like an absolute boss. He's got the Geneva and the Julio Cesare there. Torpedoes are back up. Keeps creeping forward. Nobody actually has a clear shot at him now. And no more than one ship was ever able to take a shot at him during the whole course of this engagement, despite there being at least five enemy ships within eight kilometers. He's grounded himself here, but that's fine, because he doesn't want to slip out the other side of the island after sinking the Julio Cesare uh, and expose himself to the gunfire of all of the other ships on the other side of the island. Still got the armor piercing loaded, the Geneva is still given him broadside. And you saw what this 5 inch AP was capable of doing to a Fiji at that kind of range and almost certainly would have done to the Geneva if he hadn't been finished off by the friendly Piotr Veliki around about 4 kilometers to the south. But it seems like the rest of the enemy team are determined to finish off what the Fiji Julio Cesari and Genova started. There's a Scharnhorst and a New York coming around this corner. And in the words of Admiral Akbar, our cruisers can't repel firepower of that magnitude. His torpedoes are still on cooldown, and you really don't want to get shot at by a Scharnhorst when you're in the Atlanta. Uh, the lower calibre battleship guns on the Scharnhorst are far less likely to overpenetrate. But while the port side torpedoes are on cooldown, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the starboard side torpedoes. And the Scharnhorst appears to be concentrating his main battery guns on something else, relying on his secondaries, which are no joke, and possibly also his torpedoes to finish off Sinful. Well, he's going to pay dearly for that critical error of judgement. <laughs> Although he comes close, because, well, the Scharnhorst secondaries are no joke. But, well, there are no medals for coming close, are there? <laughs> Saying you came close is just a fancy apologetic way of saying you failed. Although, well, if we're being completely fair to the Scharnhorst, he did get a little unlucky there. Uh, he wasn't just relying on his secondaries. He did eventually target Sinful with his 283mm gun batteries. Rear turret first, over penetrations, and then the two front turrets, more over penetrations. So he got kind of unlucky there. But at the same time, he did blunder around the corner right into the Atlantis torpedoes, and luck had absolutely nothing 
to do with that. Slips in back behind the island here, just in case the New York or the Alba decide to get any funny ideas, and again starts lofting shells clean over the top, and farming more high explosive damage on the New York. The friendly Piotr Veliki eventually goes down, uh, but he was of invaluable assistance to Sinful over here. It, it's not that Sinful single-handedly cock-blocked more than half of the enemy team throughout the course of this match. He did have some assistance, most notably from the Piotr Veliki, uh, who was an invaluable teammate to have. But while he was cock-blocking more than half of the enemy team over here, the rest of his team have managed to sweep the map almost clear of all opposition, probably due in no small part to the fact that Sinful was cock-blocking more than half of the enemy team over here for the entire match, which means the rest of his team were effectively fighting while outnumbering the enemy almost two to one everywhere else. There are now only two ships remaining on the enemy team, an enemy team which is currently in proud possession of exactly 41 points, which means that if Sinful can get the kill on this Alba, and yes, it really is an Alba. <laughs> it's not only going to win the match, but it's also going to give him the Kraken Unleashed. So that's a Confederate, two devastating strikes, Kraken Unleashed, First Blood and High Calibre, with 166,000 damage done and nearly three quarters of a million credits earned. That was a spectacular battle from Sinful's perspective with some absolutely masterful positioning around the island. And some brown trouser moments, particularly when the Fiji and the Scharnhorst came around the corner. The one thing that I would like to say to end this video though, and I don't mean to belittle Sinful's performance in any way, but he didn't actually carry his team in this battle. His team actually did pretty well despite him. <laughs> I mean, they only lost three ships overall. But that doesn't actually make it any less impressive. In fact, it makes it more impressive when you consider just how much harder you have to work to stand out against the crowd when you are in a team that's ruffle stomping the enemy three kills to eleven. So well done to everybody on Sinful's team, but particularly, and for what I hope by now are fairly obvious reasons, well done to Sinful. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.